Okay, so uh, let's start uh, today's class by discussing something that we have already uh, covered up in the last few classes. Uh, in fact, uh, we have discussed about uh, four different types of common source stages with different types of loads. For example, we have started with a common source stage with a resistive load, something like that. Let this be your input side, which is biased with V1, and you are having this input signal V in the resistive load, and you have taken the output from this terminal. That's the first stage. I mean, the first kind of uh, amplifier common source stage that we have discussed, and hopefully, you can remember what is the expression for the the voltage gain, the expression was AV given by minus GM times RD. The input resistance of uh, this uh, common source stage is equal to infinite. And what about the output resistance? You know, to find out the output resistance, uh, you need to draw the small signal model. And accordingly, you have to carry out all these uh, calculations. You have to make all those uh, independent source inactive, apply some voltage from outside and then you just find out what is the ratio of this voltage to current. And for this, what is output resistance uh, R out? RD parallel. So this is basically RD parallel to the output resistance itself. So AV doesn't have RD In that case, uh, it is also true that AV is uh, uh, GM RD parallel. Not yet. Okay. That means I am uh, just uh, included the channel in modulation. So that is the first first kind of amplifier, the common source stage that we have discussed. Then what else? Then we have considered the common source stage with say current source load, something like this. There you have two MOS devices. Once again, this is uh, not degenerated. Source is having higher potential as compared to the gate, and you have applied the input at the gate of the first amplifier. Suppose this is your V1, this is the input signal V in, and this is MOS1, MOS2, this is V2 plus minus, and we are taking the output from this terminal. So there you have considered the corresponding expression for the voltage gain. What was the value for this voltage gain? Minus minus GM1 times the total resistance seen from the drain terminal to the AC ground. So what is the total resistance? You have one resistance uh, connected uh, over there. One resistance you have from here to here, you have one resistance and the other resistance you have from here to here, right? So therefore, uh, this resistance was uh, simply, I can write RO1 parallel RO2. Once again, the input resistance was equal to infinite because you have applied the input at the gate. And what about the output resistance, R out? What about the output resistance for this stage, common source stage with current source load? R1 parallel R2. Right? So common source stage with a resistive load, then common source stage with a current source load. Then we have the common source stage with say direct connected load. Right? So for common source stage with direct connected load, you have something like this. Once again, the source is not degenerated. The 
V in this is a supply V D D MOS two. You are taking the output from this terminal. So for this, what was the expression for the voltage gain? A V minus G M one times minus G M one times one second the total resistance seen from this drain terminal to the AC ground. That is what is the resistance? Total resistance. R O one parallel. R O two. One by G M two. Right. What about the input resistance? One second input resistance is equal to infinite. And what about the output resistance? R out. R one parallel R two parallel one upon G M two. R one parallel R two parallel one upon G M two. Now, if you compare these three uh, common source stage with resistive load, common source stage with current source load, and common source stage with the direct current load, in fact, the voltage gain is basically the product of the transconductance of the amplifying device, amplifying MOS multiplied with the output resistance. Now, here the output resistance is typically small if we have simple resistive load, anti parallel or not. Now, that we can increase if I include a uh, current source load over there. That means it becomes R one parallel R two. And uh, on the other hand, if I incorporate the direct connected load, in that case, this output resistance is reduced. R one parallel R two parallel one upon G M two. That means uh, it is eventually governed by one upon G M two, which is typically small, ten sub ohms. So that's why uh, the voltage gain is relatively small in the last case. However, it is much more stable. That we already discussed, right? Now, apart from that, we have also discussed another kind of. Uh, Common source stage that is a common source stage with source degeneration. So let, let's consider, uh, say, with a resistive load, for example. It's a common source stage with source degeneration. So here you have R D R S. For biasing, you have some voltage. It will be V one. This is your input signal P in supply over there V D D, and you are taking the output from this terminal. Okay. So in that case, uh, what's your voltage gain expression A V? Minus G M one by one plus G M one. Minus. It is better to write in that way. Minus. You should write R D the total resistance. Seen between the drain terminal to AC ground, divided by one upon G M plus this R S. We have just neglected the channel length modulation. Lambda is equal to zero. What is the input resistance? That is equal to infinite. R N equal to infinite. Right. What about the also here? Uh, whenever I am writing, if is equal to this much, that means I have considered lambda is equal to zero. Right. Now, what about the output resistance? Or suppose you are suppose I am considering that lambda is non-zero. For example, suppose lambda is non-zero. In that case, what should be your uh, output resistance? Yes. So uh, whenever I'm considering that, okay, uh, I would like to find out the output resistance, right? So in that case, what happens? Uh, you have uh, this one. So that particular thing. Okay. So this should be inactive. Short it because I'm considering the small signal model. One second, this should be active as well because there should not be any independent voltage source or current source. So basically, so your gate is connected to AC ground. Okay. Now forget about R D for the time being. 
then what is your job to connect some external voltage at this particular drain edge some vx and measure what is the current find out the ratio vx upon vx that will give you the output resistance right so in the small signal model how does it look like then so ultimately it looks something like that if i just if i just forget about this rd part then what you have if i just forget about this rd part then If I just forget about the RT part, then what I have, I have this one. You have RS over there. So this is my output node. This is my output node. This is basically connected to AC ground. Because beyond is there, that's the DC voltage. So if I want to find out the corresponding uh, small signal resistance that should be connected to AC ground, V in is also absent. So I should place over there V in. This is V in. Okay. This one is RS. And I need to apply some external voltage from outside. I have to connect some external voltage from outside. It will be Vx measure what is the current drawn by the circuit and your R out is basically the ratio between Vx and Ix, right? So for this common source stage with degeneration, with resistive load and I am just forgetting about this RT because I know that whatever be the resistance over there, so that resistance is basically measured between the drain terminal and the AC ground. And you have another resistance RT between the drain and the VDT, that means drain and AC ground. So whatever the resistance that I am getting over here, so that resistance will be there in parallel with this RT. Okay. So is this something similar that you have already seen previously? Is it similar? Have you observed this one? Hmm? Yes, this circuit. What is that? Is it familiar to you? Is it familiar? Yes, it's a current source with degeneration. Degenerated current source. Right? Degenerated current source. Okay. Then what about the R out expression? Already you have noticed the expression for R out. For this particular case, this expression was something like that. The expression for R out was 1 plus, so let it be some also one, so GM1 R1 times RS plus R1. If I do not have any RS over there, it's basically simply a current source, simple current source. Forget about whether, the, whether this uh, is used uh, in this particular circuit or not, forget about that. Because whenever I am considering the small signal equivalent resistance, then uh, your V1 is also absent, V is also absent. So it doesn't matter whether this is used as, as an amplifier or this is used as a current source. The only thing that you have to observe, what is my resistance? So what does that value? Already you have calculated last day. It's a basically nothing but degenerated current source. Degenerated with some resistance RS. So this can also be used as this can also be used as a current source, something like that. Some plus minus, right? It's basically a current source. It's biased with some uh, voltage, some voltage, uh, say V1. And whenever you are using this as an amplifier, then you have to use another small signal over there, something like that. But whenever you are using or you are observing this, the behavior of this particular circuit, 
in the regime of a small signal. In that case, both of these two, AC signal and the DC signal, they are absent. So, it doesn't matter whether you are using this as, as a uh, current source or you are using this as an amplifier. So, small signal regime, it looks the same. So, I'm going to put that here. So, already you have calculated the R out value that is 1 plus Gm1 R1 times Rs plus R1 because this is degenerated by some resistance Rs. If Rs is absent, then what was the resistance? Simply R1 that we already observed. So, if, if Rs is absent over there, what was the resistance from here to here? Simply R1 and then this R1 is coming in parallel with Rd, right? So, in that case, what should be my R D value? I sorry, R out value. So, what is my R out then? This R out is nothing but R D in parallel with 1 plus G M 1 R O 1 times R S plus R O 1 with lambda not equal to 0. That means you have some finite R1. If lambda is equal to 0, that means R1 is equal to infinite. Okay. So, that is the expression for the R out, Rt parallel 1 plus G1 R1 times Rs plus R1, but eventually this is controlled by Rt because that value is very large. The general kinds of having very large input uh, output resistance and then whenever it is parallel with Rt, then this R out is ultimately controlled by Rt, governed by Rt. Okay. If lambda is equal to 0, that means what R1 is equal to infinite. Lambda 0 means what? You do not have any resistance over there from uh, that is this is basically open circuit. If lambda is equal to 0, so let us let us draw the small signal model then. If lambda is equal to 0, let us draw the small signal model for this one. How does it look like? For this MOS, so let it be say MOS1, M1. Okay. So this is gate, this one is drain, this one is source. Between gate to source, suppose this voltage is V1, say for example, right? And then you have a GMV1 present over here. Okay and uh, lambda is equal to 0. Lambda is equal to 0 means you do not have any resistance between drain to source. That is open circuited, right? You do not have any R1 present over there. But the source is not grounded. You have an RS over there. So, through RS it is grounded, right? And then your gate is already grounded, AC ground, okay? So, this is grounded. What else? Then you have to connect some external voltage from outside. You need to connect some external voltage from outside over there and you measure the, so let it be Vx, let the current be Ix. Okay. Let me, let me call this voltage, let it be say Vs. Then what is the relation between V1 and Vs? V1 is equal to minus Vs. So, V1 is equal to minus Vs, right? What is the relation between uh, this current source and this Ix? Both of them are same. That means Gm V1 is equal to I of x. What is Vs? Ix times Rs. Okay? Then what is the relation between Vx and uh, then how can you relate this one? Vx with Is, Ix. Hmm. Hmm. Then what is the value? What you are getting? What there? Yes. 
V1 is equal to minus Vs, that is obvious. This voltage over here with respect to gate, this is V1 plus minus and here you have another plus minus. So, V1 plus Vs is equal to 0 or V1 is equal to minus Vs. What is the resistance seen by this uh, intercombination? If I assume that, okay, your lambda is uh, equal to 0. The same expression we have got last day. That means what? Hmm. That means what? Even if you change Vx, so what is I? Ix is going to be gm times V1 only. You will change this, na? You don't have an R1 present over there. You don't have an R1 between brain to source. It's an ideal kind of current source. Even if you change uh, Vx by some amount, will there be changing Ix? No. That means what is the property of this particular device? Yes, ideal current source. Right? So, your resistance will be infinite. And now, if we just plug in that con it, this concept over there, if we just uh, substitute the value 1 plus gm, actually, what is the value if R1 is not infinite? If R1 is finite, finitely large, then what is the expression? You have already got 1 plus gm, gm1 R1 times Rs plus R1, right? If lambda is equal to 0, R1 becomes infinite. Right, so in this entire expression 1 plus gm1, GM1 r1 times rs plus some r1 and if the r1 value is equal to infinite, that is basically eventually becoming infinite. So something is coming parallel with rd, so r out is nothing but rd. Right, if it is an ideal, uh, if I just neglect about uh, your hmm, this one, uh, I mean uh, if I just neglect the standard modulation of this particular MOS, then uh, your r out is equal to rd and the expression of the voltage again is given by minus of rd by 1 plus 1 by gm plus rs. If not, if not, then what should be your uh, expression for the voltage again with lambda non-zero? With lambda non-zero, then what is the expression? No. What is the, what is the uh, generating expression that you have derived last time? If I have a common source stage with source regeneration, then generically, what should be done? How can I write the expression for the voltage? It's basically the ratio of two parameters. The new matter you have, the total resistance in between the drain and the AC ground. Right. So from here to here, from this output terminal to AC ground, you have this output resistance of, of this intercombination. And another, you have uh, another resistance RD over there, external resistance. Right. So basically, you have this is what? R out of this combination, which is nothing but RD parallel this entire thing 1 plus Gm1 R1 into Rs plus R1 divided by 1 by Gm1 plus the resistance seen between the source and the AC ground. And if I have a simple resistive load kind, something like this, it's nothing but simple Rs. So this is nothing but your minus. Rd parallel 1 plus gm1 r1 times rs plus r1 divided by 1 by gm1 plus rs with lambda non zero or r1 infinite, uh, r1 finitely large. That is the expression. Okay. So remember this uh, uh, this notion of output resistance for a common source stage with source degeneration. The expression is one plus gm one r one times r s 
plus R1. And whenever this is coming in parallel with RT, then ultimately uh, this is the much more accurate expression. You can argue that okay, that value is very much close to RT. It's true, it's close to RT. But the thing is that uh, if you are very much accurate in, in calculation, then you have to incorporate all this uh, big expression. Okay. So what you find for a common source state, since we are applying the input at the gate terminal and gate is isolated from the channel by some insulator, so the input resistance is becoming infinite. Input resistance is infinite and output resistance you have different other values. In some cases you have uh, the value equal to say RD, some other cases might be some RO1 parallel RO2, sometimes it is only uh, like uh, 1 upon GM, close to 1 upon GM if you uh, just use the uh, direct connected load. And here you have uh, this expression, R D parallel something. But eventually this is also close to R D because this expression, I mean this expression for the output resistance for a degenerated uh, current source that is very large with respect to R D. So you can make it almost close to R D. Now apart from this common source stage, now what happens if I if I apply the input at, at the at the source terminal, not at the gate? So instead of applying the input at the gate, if I apply the input at the source, then what happens? Uh, then uh, this kind of uh, structure is known as a common gate kind of right? common gate stage. So you are applying input at the source end, but you cannot make the gate open simply because so you need to ensure that you have to apply sufficiently positive bias between the gate and the source so that the device remains in the uh, on region, it becomes on and uh, it is operating in the saturation region. And since we are using NMOS here, so obviously the, this voltage V1 that we are using over there, so that voltage should be, so that voltage should be greater than the threshold voltage, so that the MOS is turned. Okay. Now we will do some uh, calculation, uh, the mathematical calculation, but before that, let's try to fix what happens if I uh, suppose at the source end I have uh, directly connected the uh, input and uh, the, the MOS is properly biased then what happens if I apply some I mean if the input is uh, increased by some amount then what happens yeah. let's try to visualize the, uh, the behavior of this particular uh, circuit uh, qualitatively first and then we will uh, do the subsequent uh, mathematical calculations now what happens if the input rises by some amount by some delta V Suppose the input is present over there, that, that value is being, and this has been risen by some amount, say delta V. Then what happens to the circuit? What is the behavior? The gate is fixed, gate is having some voltage V1. Okay? And I am assuming that this is large enough so that the device is there in the uh, saturation region. Now, if the uh, source voltage increases by some amount, delta V, what is what, what about the gate source voltage? Gate is fixed at V1, source is increased by some delta V, so source, so, so the gate source voltage will reduce by some same delta V. Because gate is fixed at V1, source is increased by delta V, so gate source will reduce by delta V. And the device, I know that the device is operating in the saturation region. And you know the expression for the current, half of mu and C of W over L, the ordinary voltage square into 1 plus number of Gs. Now if your gate source voltage drops, that means what? The current must drop. If the current drops, then uh, what is your output voltage? This output voltage is given by VDD minus IDRT. V out is given by VDD minus IDRT. Okay? So if your uh, ID drops by some amount, then what about the V out? V out will increase. Okay. So, the takeaway is that if your input increases by some amount delta V in, the output also increases by some amount delta V out. Unlike the common source stage. Because the common source stage, if I increase the, uh, the corresponding input by some amount, the output drops by some other amount. As a matter of fact, if we just calculate this delta V in upon, I mean delta V out upon delta V in that ratio, so that ratio was found out to be having some negative sign. If V in increases, then V out decreases. Now here, if V in increases, V out also increases. Right. And accordingly, you have to, in order to find out the gain, I have to find out the delta V out upon delta V. 
last time also you have done the same thing delta v out by delta v but that time you have seen that if delta v in increases if delta v in is having some positive kind of thing then delta v out is having some negative kind of thing so as a matter of fact the gain was actually negative mod of this gain is positive that is greater than 1 but the gain eventually it is negative but here this is not the case if the input rises by some amount output also rises by some other amount and the ratio of these two will give you the expression for the voltage gain so that is a qualitative discussion about this common gate state so eventually uh, it is something like that uh, as i have already mentioned uh, you have applied the input at the source end and uh, gate is biased with some voltage let it be v1 and uh, to start with let's consider we have some resistive load now you understand that if i don't have a resistive load if i have some current source load or direct connected load and all the other types of loads then this uh, the, the resistance of that particular load will be simply uh, substituted then i can draw the uh, corresponding small signal model for this uh, common gate stage with uh, lambda is equal to 0 here that means r not equal to infinite gate source drain this is the terminal gate to source the voltage is suppose applied voltage v1 and i have applied the input between source and the gate and gate is eventually at ac ground because gate voltage is fixed at v1 so gate is at ac ground and i am applying the input between the source and the gate or source and the ac ground that is v so if i have the voltage dependence v1 between gate to source so i should have a voltage dependent current source between drain to source not between drain to ground drain to source right so that is nothing but gm times v1 and apart from that you have a resistance connected between the drain terminal to vnd that means drain to ac ground so drain to ac ground you have another resistance that is rd if i have uh, lambda not equal to 0 r not is equal to finite then you should connect another resistance between drain terminal to the source terminal then uh, what you can do is uh, you can uh, simply apply tcl at this particular node so what is suppose this current which is flowing in that direction suppose this current is id then what is your v out v out is equal to id times rd and if i apply kcl at this particular node then id plus gm v1 that is equal to 0 both of them are leaving that node so id plus gm will equal to 0 so from that what you can get id is equal to minus gm v1 and what is the relation between v1 and gm v1 and gm they are equal but opposite equal and opposite v1 is equal to minus gm so then ultimately what you are getting if e the expression for the voltage gain or your uh, id is becoming gm times vn and uh, v out is equal to id times rt then ultimately the expression for the voltage is nothing but v out upon vn that is equal to gm times rt surprisingly the same expression uh, in case of your uh, vjt based amplifier also uh, if i just compare if you just compare the uh, common emitter common emitter stage with the common base stage eventually common emitter stage with a resistive kind of load the expression was like uh, if you can remember it was like uh, minus gm times rc common emitter stage and common base stage it was simply gm times rc so magnitude noise they are same but you have a negative sign for a common emitter stage but for common uh, base stage you don't have any negative sign here also the same thing for common source topology for common source topology you have uh, gm times rt with a negative sign outside and for common gate topology you have the same value of gm rt but you don't have any negative sign right then the question is that why should i use this is there any additional advantage of this uh, common gate topology over and above this common source stage so we have to be in same phase change no phase change but uh, phase change doesn't make any impact as far as amplification is concerned or as far as the properties of uh, amplifier is concerned what are the properties of amplifier like uh, the gain or the magnitude of the gain then your stability factor then your uh, voltage swing then the power consumption obviously the uh, the bandwidth concept is there but phase change doesn't make any impact right yes regarding the input impedance we have to take a look carefully because there uh, i have here i have applied the input at the source and not at the a uh, gate terminal so let's let's check so how to find out the input impedance same circuit simple circuit so for the calculation of the input impedance what i need to do the same thing uh, this time uh, 
uh, you are applying the input at uh, at the source end, and whenever you are calculating the input impedance of this particular module, then you have to make all the independent voltage source inactive, all the independent voltage source and the current source has to make inactive, not the dependent one, right? So here uh, at the gate terminal, you have some independent uh, DC voltage that is V1. In the small signal model, obviously, it should be connected to AC ground. So this is kind of AC ground. Between train to source, you have some GM fence V1. And VMR, that is basically a dependent current source, voltage dependent current source. So you can't make it zero, you can't make it inactive. It's a dependent current source. You, can, you, have, you have to make all the independent voltage and current source inactive. This is a dependent one. This is a dependent. This current source, the value depends upon the value of this V1. You can't make it inactive. And uh, what else? Uh, you have some resistance over there, RT. Fine. So this is your input port. Identify the input port. Apply some external voltage. Measure the current. What is the current being drawn by this circuit? I know the ratio. That will give you the input resistance. Why input resistance? Because you have connected this at the input terminal. Input port of the amplifier. What is the input port? Source to gate. What is the output port? Drain to gate or a common gate topology. Okay. So if the applied input is V, I mean the applied voltage is Vx over there, then V1 plus minus and another plus minus. V1 plus Vx is equal to 0 or Vx is equal to minus V1. Okay. And then uh, if I just consider this particular node at the source end, both of these two currents are they are entering. Gm V1 and Ix, both of them are entering. So GMP1 plus IX is equal to 0. So from that you find that IX is equal to minus GMP1 and already you have found out that V1 is equal to minus VX. So IX is equal to GMPX. So from that RN is equal to VX upon IX that is equal to 1 upon GM. So this is not equal to infinite. Last time what happened? Last time previously what happens? For a common source stage you have uh, everything is fine something like that. If I once again take a look at what happens at the co common source stage. For common source test with a simple resistive uh, load, for example, we have GM V1 present over there. This one is V1. This is your gate terminal. This is the drain terminal. This is the source terminal. And suppose uh, source is grounded, for example, and you have some resistance connected over there, RD. Now, in order to find out uh, the input resistance, what you need to do? You have applied some external voltage and you have measured the current ratio of these two for a common source stage with a simple resistive load. Now, that time you don't have any gate current, the gate current was absent. You don't have any current flowing through this, the current is flowing in this path only, right? There is no current flowing through this. You have applied some voltage V1, but there is no current, basically open circuit. So that whatever is the value of Vx, that Ix was eventually 0. So if you just find out the ratio of Vx upon Ix, that will give you a value equal to infinite. At least for the low frequency. For high frequency, you can have some capacitors and then that uh, impedance is not infinite. But at least for the low frequency, uh, this is uh, infinite. So for common source stage, the corresponding input impedance was infinite. Uh, it was infinite. But for common gate stage, this is non-infinite and very small. It's only one upon GM, right? So sometimes, whenever uh, you connect uh, or you, you uh, design some amplifier, which is uh, which is uh, collecting the input from some from some source whose uh, input resistance is almost close to uh, this one upon GM. Typically, what is the value of one upon GM? Typically, it is in the range of 15 sub ohms. Say, for example, suppose it is 50 ohms. Now, whenever uh, you are uh, connecting this stage or whenever this stage is accepting the input from a previous stage whose input is also or whose resistance is also equal to uh, say 10 sub ohms, the activity is very much uh, useful, this common uh, gate stage. Then what about the uh, output uh, impedance uh, of this particular or uh, output resistance of this particular model? Let's have a look. So for the output resistance, what happens? This time you have to connect. For output, for the calculation of the output resistance, for source has to be grounded because remember, that voltage source, 
independent one, so you have to make it inactive. This is grounded, gate is already inactive because gate is connected to some V1 voltage that is constant voltage, DC voltage. The small signal model that should be zero, that should be grounded. You have this GMV1 present over there, RT present over there, and then you have to identify which is my output terminal, drain is my output terminal. So drain with respect to drain and with respect to the AC ground, I have just connected some external voltage, VX over <laughs> there, and to measure what is the current, that is IX. Correct? So do you expect that uh, now if I just consider this one? What is V1 over there? What is V1? V1 zero. For this for this particular model, for the calculation of output resistance, not for the calculation of the input resistance, or not for the calculation of your uh, uh, voltage gain. The activity was not zero. For the calculation of output resistance, V1 is equal to zero because gate is having a zero voltage, zero AC voltage, it is connected to AC ground. Source is also connected to AC ground. So gate to source voltage V1 is equal to zero. Right? So that's why this is basically inactive, GM V1. Then what is my Vx upon Ix? That is nothing but Rt. Right? That is simply Rt. So the output resistance is given by Rt. If I just uh, simply neglect the uh, channel in modulation. If not, then obviously I have to incorporate this R0 present over here. Right? So uh, uh, it makes a, a competitive analysis uh, between the uh, common source stage and the common uh, gate stage. Eventually looks almost the same. This common source stage, the input is applied at the gate, source is grounded, output is obtained from the drain terminal. And if I have some positive excursion of the input signal, the output signal will have some negative excursion, something like that. Right? And uh, for this, your input resistance is finite, output resistance is equal to Rd, and the gain is given by minus GMRD. On the other hand, if I consider the common gate stage where input is applied at the source terminal with gate is having some bias voltage, P1 over there, and everything remaining the same, and if I have some positive excursion at the source end, that means if the input is having is experiencing some positive excursion over there, then the output is also experiencing some positive excursion. So that's why you don't have a negative sign in the calculation of the voltage gain. It's simply GM times RT. The output resistance, they are also comparable, both of them are RT, but as far as the input resistance is concerned, this is significantly lower, one upon G only. Okay. But remember, we need to bias the uh, uh, input, I mean, the input side, you have to bias it properly. For the biasing uh, operation, what we can do, uh, we can have uh, this kind of arrangement. We need to provide certain voltage at the gate terminal. So sometimes some voltage divided bias could have been applied. Uh, with uh, two resistance over there, suppose R1 and R2. So there I have shown with some discrete resistances, R1 and R2. And accordingly, the gate voltage with respect to uh, the ground, the absolute value of the gate voltage is nothing but your R2 upon R1 plus R2 times VDD. I have told you already that uh, although we have so many bias voltages in, in the amplifier circuit, but actually all of them are synthesized from a, a single rail, the power supply, that is VDD, for example. Then in that case, uh, what is your V1? That is the gate voltage, is nothing but R2 upon R1 plus R2 times VDD. Right, and then uh, what else? Here, uh, the input signal is having some uh, non zero source resistance that is given by R in, right? And suppose your input signal can uh, cannot carry the DC signal, I mean, the D DC current, it cannot carry the DC current. Suppose uh, before before this common gate stage, you have some, some stage like some uh, antenna is present uh, which cannot carry some DC current. So, in that case. So even if the device is on, even if the MOS is on, the channel, but you have to provide a path through which the DC current current flows, right? So this path is provided by this RS, this source resistance. Uh, this resistance is connected between the source and the uh, AC ground, or source of the DC ground, same thing. So therefore, uh, this particular resistance RS will carry the DC drain current because uh, if the input is uh, something like, uh, say, uh, some antenna, for example, which cannot carry some DC currents, in that case, you have to provide some path through which the DC drain current flows. So that's why this RS is connected over here. So in that case, if you would like to find out the output uh, voltage, V out, or rather if you would like to find out the, uh, the gain of this entire amplifier, uh, V out upon V in, so it can be done in two stages. One is uh, Vx upon V in, and then V out upon Vx. V out upon Vx, you already know what is the expression V out upon Vx. 
already have calculated. Suppose if this voltage is equal to, already have seen, na? if this voltage here, uh, if this voltage is equal to V in present over there, then if this voltage is equal to V in present over there, then from here to here this gain is given by Gm times Rt. So, accordingly, uh, we have to find out uh, what is my Vx as a function of V. What is that? Vx upon V. Vx upon V. So, here at this particular point, so basically it is nothing but a voltage divider. Right? So, there this resistance simply are in, no doubt about that. What about this resistance from here to AC ground? From here to AC ground, we have one RS. And apart from that, this is also the input resistance of this particular MOS. What is that 1 upon GM? So, basically, it is a parallel combination of RS and 1 upon GM. And that is coming in series with RD. Right? So, Vx is given by RS parallel 1 upon GM divided by RD plus this RS parallel 1 upon GM times V in. Okay? And V out upon Vx already you know, this expression for V out upon Vx that is given by GM times RT. And then uh, this is the final expression for your voltage gain. If RS parallel 1 upon GM divided by R in plus RS parallel 1 upon GM multiplied with GM. Okay? There is no phase reversal. And uh, obviously, depending upon the value of these uh, individual values of this uh, RS and GM, the values uh, could have been modified. And if R and here we have considered that R not equal to infinite, infinite operation. That means lambda is equal to zero. Let me do one thing. So, it is a common source stage you have, proper bias the input is applied at the gate end this is a common source stage with no degeneration and suppose this is applied the output of this is applied to another common gate stage ok something like this Let me have some common rail. This is VDD. Let it be RD1, let it be RD2. So this is biased with some voltage, let it be VD, V2. We are taking the output from this terminal P out. This is MOS 1, first stage, MOS 2, second stage. And the question is, you have a common source stage followed by a common gate stage. Okay, then the question is, uh, what is the expression for the voltage? What is the expression for the So, let, let me call Suppose at this particular end, uh, this is a little bit of V dash. This is simply V dash. Okay. This is simply V dash. Then, uh, what is the overall output? I mean, overall gain V out upon V in. What do you feel? Yes, V dash V out upon that's quite obvious. That is quite obvious that your AV overall, AV overall is nothing but, v, this is nothing but V out upon V in. So, that is equal to V out upon V dash multiplied V dash upon V in. Now, let us have a look at the second part, what about V dash upon V in. 
what is that? That means the input, I mean the voltage ground of the first stage, common source stage. What is that? Minus G M one times of yes. So what is that? We just upon P. So this is basically the voltage ground of the first stage. So I have made it very simple. Simple resistive load. So what does that notion? The notion was something like minus. It's a common source stage. So minus would be there. Transconductance of the first stage amplifying device G M one times what? Times the total resistance seen between the drain and the AC ground, right? So between the drain and AC ground, you have one resistance obviously R D one that is present. Fine. Apart from that, you have the second resistance that means the input resistance of the MOS two. So this is nothing but R D one parallel one upon G M two. Okay. And what about uh, your uh, V out upon V dash? V out upon V dash. That means the voltage gain for the second stage, common gate stage. Hmm? G M two times R T. Right? R T two. Yeah, R T two. So. V dash upon V minus G M one multiplied with R D one parallel one upon G M two. Now that value is almost approximately equal to minus G M one upon G M two. Since R D is much much larger as compared to one upon G M two, right? So can you find some some similarity between this one and that what we have already studied in your electrical circuits course? Any similarity? The first stage is provide minus G M one upon G M two. Then uh, that value is almost close to. It's not that large. It's not that large, right? So what is the use of? Uh, so uh, if, or say let's consider that uh, they are equal. G M one and G M two are equal. Uh, yeah, so it is used as a buffer. It is used as a buffer. The first stage, common source stage, used used as a buffer. Not much gain. The gain is actually obtained from the second stage. The same thing that you have already studied in your uh, common emitter, common base, cascade, which is also known as a cascode kind of thing. Common emitter, common base, cascade. Here we have a common source. Common gate kind of cascade. The same notion here also is known as a cascade kind of amplifier. The first stage is used as an as simply as a buffer minus G one upon G two, right? And the second stage will actually amplify the signal. What is the advantage? Buffering is one thing. Second one is the in terms of the bandwidth that we will discuss later on. Whenever we will move to the last unit of our course, that is one thing, right? Okay, fine. So. Uh, let's let's uh, let's do another thing. Suppose so far you have seen that uh, your input signal, the common gate stage, with a resistive kind of load, sorry, it's a common gate. So apply some input over there. So let's apply some input over there at the source terminal. V1, RD, VDD. Now, as of now, while calculating the input resistance, we have used that. Okay, we have assumed that. Okay, I have connected some input over there at the source end. This is my output terminal, V out. And as of now, we have considered that the input signal is an ideal input. That means what? You don't have any R in part. That means, in general, any input signal can be recognized as this one. You have some P in, and you have some R in present over there, right? 
So, in the calculation of the input resistance, what we have assumed, all the independent voltage and current source should be met in active. So, in that calculation, we have just neglected part in part. We have only assumed that, okay, we have some input signal present over there at the source end over there. And that is connected to simply AC ground. Because I have to make it connected. That means an ideal kind, ideal kind of uh, input signal with R is equal to zero. But suppose it's not an ideal source, suppose it's a practical source with R in non-zero. With R in non-zero, then what should be your modified uh, structure? Then the structure looks something like that. So in that case, you should also have an R in over there. And then this is your input signal P in. So this R in which is non-zero. So what is equivalent small signal model? This is the composite model. What is equivalent small signal model? How does it look like? Equivalent small signal model. How does it look like? This. Let me draw once again. This is kind of AC ground. This is also kind of AC ground. And this is also kind of AC ground. This one is RD. This one is R in. And I'd like to find out the this is terminal. So I have to find out the resistance between this terminal and the ground terminal. Is it all right? So had this been the case, had this been the case, then what is your output resistance? Hmm? What is your output resistance here for the common uh, gate stage? Common gate stage? In the calculation so far, we have seen that it is given by simply Rd, no? Just simply Rd. If R is equal to 0, R is equal to 0, ideal voltage source. Then you have already noticed that this is basically R D. But if R is non-zero, in that case, this is very much, I mean, that particular circuit, if you just closely observe this circuit, with this one, this circuit, the same. So here, what will be the corresponding output resistance R out? So this R out is nothing but Once again, you have Rd is there, fine, something in parallel, and then this one, this enter combination, this enter combination is nothing but degenerated current source. And you already know the expression for this, I mean the output resistance for degenerated current source. Right. So common gate states, we would like to find out the output resistance of the common gate states with non-zero input resistance, I mean non-zero, non-ideal input signal and it seems that this is nothing but 1 plus gm1 ro1 times r in plus R1. this is coming in parallel with r t clear if not if that was absent, if Arduino was not there, if Arduino is non, if that is the scenario for Arduino non-zero, right? R out with non-zero Arduino, and what about R out with zero Arduino? R T parallel. 
Between red to source, you have this one. Between red to source, for the MOS itself, between red to source, you have R1. And for the calculation of the output resistance, the only input uh, signal should be made inactive, independent voltage source should be made inactive, and you don't have any R over there. That means this point is basically connected to AC ground. So between this terminal to this terminal, you have one R over. And from this terminal to this terminal, you have another RD. And these two are parallel because this is also AC ground, this is also AC ground. So you have RD parallel R1. If R is equal to zero for ideal voltage source. Whenever the uh, your uh, common gate state is excited with some ideal voltage source, ideal signal source with R equal to zero, in that case your output resistance is given by RD parallel R1. If not, if the if the common source state, a common gate state is excited with some non-ideal voltage source with R not equal to zero, in that case your R out is given by RD parallel this one. You may argue that okay, it is almost close to it's governed by RT, that's true, it's governed by RT. But uh, if you find out the exact calculation, in that case, uh, in one case with R in equal to zero, it becomes RT parallel R1, and with R in not equal to zero, that becomes RT parallel this entire Clear? Okay, so uh, with this, let me uh, stop here today. Uh, regarding the discussion of this uh, common gate stage to some extent and next day we will further extend this discussion on common gate stage and we will uh, visualize the uh, common source, common gate, cascade combination in much more detail.